Hi everybody and welcome to another Gaffer in Gear. In this episode we'll be looking at what I keep in my onset toolkit. So the first thing you'll find in my tool bag is a smaller tool pouch. So this is for uh, any little tools I need to carry around on me. Now I work in uh, TV commercials and the corporate sector mostly so I'm usually within about 50 meters of the big uh, toolkit anyway, so I try to avoid carrying anything like this on me as much as I can. Now, what I like about this, um, this is made by Tough Built. It's an Australian brand. I did the TV commercial for them and I was really impressed with the product, so I'm giving them a free plug. What I really like about this stuff is it comes with a little V-mount uh, that you can put on your, uh, on your belt and you can just clip this on, so no problem at all. Uh, at the end of the day or you're finished using the toolkit and you want to get it off you, you literally just unclip it like that. So really, really handy little unit. Let's have a look at what I keep inside it. Now one of the tools I keep in this is my colour spectrometer. So um, uh, my toolkit's worth about three and a half thousand bucks and this is about two thousand dollars of that. So this little device here, um, basically if we're working say in a shopping centre, I can take a reading off the lights that are in the, um, in the shopping center. Uh, this will tell me all the information I need to know to match my other lights to them. So that's what the color spectrometer is for. Uh, I also keep a spare battery for the uh, color spectrometer. So that's always important that, uh, these are rechargeable by the way, it's always important to have more than one battery for your devices so the whole shoot doesn't come to a grinding halt if you get a flat battery. Now the next thing I have in here, or, or typically have in here, is a vault stick. Okay, so what does a vault stick do? Well, I'll just turn it on. When it's um, in uh, close proximity to, to uh, electricity, say this power cable here, the vault stick flashes and makes a noise. So um, I will do a gaffer and gear video on these uh, a bit later on. And the reason I'll do that video is um, Far too many uh, young best boys have far too much faith in these things. Now the other thing I keep in this toolkit uh, is something that I use primarily all the time and that's my multi-purpose Leatherman tool. Now nine times out of ten, pretty much just using the pliers but if I need a knife I've got, uh, I've got blades on it, um, I've even got a, you know, a little pair of scissors in here somewhere. Where are they? Yep, a little pair of scissors. Um, little screwdriver kits, all that sort of things in here and it's just a handy little thing to have. Next up is my screwdrivers. So uh, this is a 9-in-1 screwdriver and socket kit. So you've got um, your uh, large uh, Phillips and flathead screwdriver and you've got a socket mount there. Um, you've got another type of socket mount here and on the flip side of this is uh, your small Phillips and uh, flathead screwdrivers and a small socket mount. Um, you also have um, a large uh, socket here, which is uh, can be, uh, uh, you can fit different size things into to unscrew. And the other thing I like about this is when I need a bit of extra leverage on set or a bit of extra leverage, the handle turns that way and I can uh, push down on this. So very handy. That's pretty much got all my socket and screw uh, screwdriver requirements covered. Um, but it is a bit bulky. So if I'm not, um, if I'm going to be working a, a fair way off from, uh, from unit base and I need to carry a screwdriver on me, I'll carry a smaller multi-head screwdriver. So that's a nine in one. I think this is a six in one. So uh, large and small screwdrivers and um, um, a couple of socket sizes. So I'll keep that on me. Now I also keep your plain old boring regular screwdrivers because one of the problems you can have is the screw might be down a hole inside a light and um, this is far too fat to get down a hole but um, this will get in nicely. So I have different size screwdrivers uh, so I can get different leverage through different holes. And the other thing I uh, keep now is um, a set of precision screwdrivers. So uh, these are all micro screwdrivers um, mainly because we use a lot of small LED fixtures now and they tend to be uh, assembled with these screws. Okay, next up, scissors for cutting gels and pliers. So um, you only need really one set of stubby nose pliers. Um, that's what you really need in terms of pliers. But in terms of um, long nose or thin nose pliers, um, you're going to need a few different sizes. So a big set like this for getting right down the back of lights. 
Um, but you know, if you just have this, then it, it's too big to turn in some lights. So uh, you're just gonna need a good spread of sizes. So um, uh, long, uh, medium, and small. Paint brushes. I use these to dust off the lights. Large, medium, and small spanner. Now, go with the adjustable uh, size, so it fits uh, pretty much any bolt, but you will need different sizes because a large spanner gives you lots of leverage, but doesn't fit in a small space. A small spanner fits in a small space, but doesn't give you much leverage. So what's this thing? It's a wind speed measurer. So what do I use this for? Well, I might have a shoot that's say uh, on the top of a hill. So it might be on the hill like this and the wind's blowing up and there might be a gust going over the top of where I'm standing. So we might be setting up a 12 by 12 up there and the wind where I'm standing is not too gusty, but above my head there might be some high winds. Of course, the problem with wind is you can't see it. So we'll put this thing um, onto a stand, it screws into a stand and raise it up high and see what the wind's doing up there. Two complete sets of Allen keys. One set of uh, metric, one set of imperial, and I always carry two knives. Um, one shit knife for people to borrow, and one good knife for me to keep and use. Okay, this little device is for testing power outlets. So it checks to see if the polarity is correct, if the power outlet's wired up correctly, and it also has a safety switch tester. We'll do a video on this uh, at some other point. And I also carry a, um, what's this called, a multimeter. Now, uh, the multimeter, I, uh, in the old days, we used to use these a lot to find faults in lights back when things were simple tungsten lights. Um, you could use this to find where the fault in the connection is. But the primary use I have for this is uh, checking what the voltage is on power outlets. So I've actually got a little um, a plug top made up to plug into, into the power outlets and that plugs directly into the multimeter. Now, I do that to see what the voltage is because um, in Melbourne, from suburb to suburb, the voltage can vary quite a bit, and I need to know what the voltage is to figure out what lights I can run. So when you're starting out, you don't have a lot of money, so you're probably gonna buy a cheap multimeter. Trust me, don't do it, it's a false economy. You'll just go through lots of them. Spend big the first time and buy a Fluke multimeter. These things are built solid, they'll last forever. Now, one thing I'm a huge fan of with the Flukes is they have a volt alarm on them. So if the thing's anywhere near voltage, Now, if you're not sure if you've blown a tungsten light globe, the multimeters come in handy for checking that. Okay, PPE, personal protection equipment. In the cabins of both my vans, I have all the high-vis gear. Um, I also have the uh, sunscreen in the big tubs. Um, but in the toolkit, I keep two sets of gloves, one for me and one for the best boy, in case he forgets to bring some. Um, spare set of sunglasses, always come in handy, spare set of sunglasses. Um, I keep a, uh, a pair of safety goggles. These ones could do with a clean, but I keep a set of safety goggles. If I'm working on a music clip or a loud environment, I bring my own earplugs because safety is everybody's responsibility, but no one cares about you. Um, I also keep um, a couple of hats, so keep the sun off my head. And this weird thing, so what is that? Well, these things are actually made for looking at solar eclipses, so you can look into the sun without going blind. Now, if I've got a HMI globe and it sounds like it's faulty or something's not right in it, um, I can look directly into it with this and I can actually see the arc in the arc chamber without damaging my eyes. So that comes in handy, particularly trying to figure out why a HMI is making a high-pitched buzz. Now, um, other things I carry, um, I don't carry torches anymore. I've just lost too many torches, or more to the point, everyone else has lost all my torches. So people borrow a torch off me so they can see what they're doing in the dark. And then what do they do? They turn it off to save the battery and then put it down somewhere and they can't find it because now they've put it in the dark. Happens all the time. So what I have now is, um, this, these are the spare ones that are in my kit. These little um, headsets that you put on. Okay, so I've got um, a couple of these in the cabins, but this is my spare one in the tool kit. And I have hats that have little lights built into them. So very handy at night, you can, uh, wear this on your head and you've got your hands free. So very, very handy. Okay, two rolls of gaffer tape. I keep one roll of the good stuff, the Nashua. That's the stuff that I use. And for people who borrow tape off me all the time and lose it, I give them a roll of the cheap shit that doesn't work too well. 
I also keep batteries, so all different size batteries. So um, you know, it, any device that you've got that use batteries have spare batteries on board, okay? So very, very important for all my meters, uh, head torches, things like that, my batteries. And for my mobile phone, I have this thing. It's a uh, D-Tap to USB adapter. So I can plug this into a V-Lock battery and run my phone for about five days straight. Now, if you're a young single guy and you're new to the lighting department, one thing I'd suggest to have in your toolkit that'll instantly give you way more sex appeal, a can of deodorant. Now we're finally starting to get close to the end. So um, look, a mallet, that always comes in handy. Um, you've got a, a 12 by 12 frame, for example, and the wind's picked up and it's bent a little bit out of shape and you can't force anything through. A mallet is, uh, mallet is a good way to get things apart. Um, color contrast uh, filter. So what this is for is, I use these for looking up at the clouds. So it reduces the contrast range. So I can see the different densities of cloud a lot easier through this, but Caution, always wear a set of sunglasses underneath because these are not um, UV protected. Okay, uh, one thing I need to buy more of here obviously is cable ties. Cable ties always come in handy for clipping cables, um, mounting power cables to things and trying to keep them out of shot. Um, loads of pens and pencils. Always handy to have pens and pencils. Now, uh, when a uh, Sharpie comes back covered in gaffer tape glue, you know the camera department borrowed it. Lens cleaning cloths. So it might seem like an odd thing. Well, um, I use those for say Dito projectors, uh, my ellipsoidals. Um, you know, if I need to clean a lens on a, on a light that's got a, a projection amount to it, there we go, use those. Um, more often than not, borrowed by the, uh, usually by the um, uh, behind the scenes cameraman. They usually don't have a lens cleaning cloth. Now, one thing that really comes in super handy these days is gel swatch books. Okay, super handy because so many lights have built in gels now. So you might have a, a scene after lunch and the cinematographer wants some colors um, and he asks what colors you've got in the sky panel and you say, well, we've got 360 plus gels. Doesn't help him too much, but give him a swatch book. He can start picking out colors at lunchtime. Seriously, really handy things to have in your toolkit now. Um, tape meter, really handy. You might have to gel a window, all right? So measure it up before you start cutting the gel. Now, one thing I will give you a tip on, make sure it's uh, imperial and metric, okay? So the imperial comes in really handy because so many things are measured in feet uh, in the film industry. Um, an interesting one's film. It's 35 millimeters wide, but then they measure it in feet. It's really interesting that it does both. Um, now over here, I've got um, uh, special stuff for mounting. So I've got spare uh, sticky pads, uh, reusable sticky pads, um, different uh, uh, adhesive tapes, so like double-sided tapes, different types of adhesive tapes, and uh, reusable or uh, Velcro, um, no more nails um, stuff for putting stuff to walls. So that's all uh, kept in the kit just in case I need it. And no kit is ever complete without WD-40. Okay, so that's what's in my toolkit. So um, when you're hiring a gaffer, uh, one of the things you might not see in the price is uh, all the stuff they have tucked away in case it's needed. I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear.